market update on the 28th. So it looks like an ABC pattern here. You can see that early this morning, uh, right at the beginning of the morning, we came down here and nailed the one hour demand. So four hours down here, I don't think there's a four hour on, well, I guess it's four hour as well, right here at 397.34, all the way down here to 394.54. And so that's kind of interesting because the 1.61 fib of this move right here is at 393.44. So actually, that would be farther down. Uh, if we zoom out here, that demand zone has been very strong right here for this big candle. We've hit it twice. And both times, decent bounce. 393, bounce at 401. Um, 393 bounce to 408. So based on those candles and looking at this chart and this being look like an A wave and this being a B wave, I'm pretty bullish from here overall. But I think that short term we could go down to like 395 and be high 394s, potentially down here for a triple bottom and then move higher. But I don't know if we'll get all the way down here. You've already hit it twice. It's probably going to come down here in this four hour demand zone right here, which right here is actually a one hour um, block that I have in here. And so I would look for maybe a little bit more downside and then a move higher. 1.61 Fib is up here in a four hour supply, which is sitting here starting at around 405.94. And then if you look at the 1.61 Fib, that's right around that area. So I wouldn't be surprised, like I said yesterday, if we continue doing the A, something like that. And that would um, invalidate a five-way move. That would just turn this whole thing into something like that, most likely. So after that, we could regroup and see what's going on. But at the end of the day, this is going up again. Um, what can you say about this market? It just moves sideways 95% of the time now. That's why I don't do any, I haven't bought options in a long time. I'm only selling options and buying shares now. So I bought Google shares at 90. I sold them at 91 because I saw that this was an ABC pattern. And I think, it can go, I think Google will probably go higher, to be honest. And I might actually get back into that trade if it comes back down here to 90 again. Because the 1.61 Fib, it hit that. That's why I sold it up here. And I figured it would back off. But I think overall, again, this is the same pattern. I think it's probably going to be something like this. And then after that, we don't know yet. But I would be looking for another entry maybe in Google with a stop below this candle right here at 89.50. So that's Google spy spy bouncing now. What a surprise! Back to 397.30. It's I think it's flat on the day. <laughs> it's getting ridiculous, but it hit it again, the one hour uh, demand zone and bounced. So that shows you how important demand zones can be. Amazon. I'm in Amazon right now. I'm looking for a C wave all the way up here to this one hour supply zone at. 9537 minimum and you can see clearly you get a big move down candle before it very bottom of the um, body 9537 be my target we'll see if this ABC move completes tomorrow and I'm not going over a lot of the longer term longer term time frames because I think it's just more helpful to look at it on shorter time frames like if you look at this on Larger time frames, I think that it's most likely going to bounce a little bit and then go down, but it's a corrective move. So short term is good enough for now. Um, Apple, Apple hit four hour supply again, came down, and you can see right here it almost hit this one hour 
uh, demand zone. But at this point, I think that I don't really like this demand zone right here. I won't be surprised if Apple comes all the way down here and hits. With the market going down, though, it's kind of hard to believe it go down this far. But maybe just the top of this wick here at 146.64. But potentially all the way down here to the body of this at 143.85. Uh, the 1.61 fib of this A wave, though, is sitting at 145.43. So maybe it'll just come down here. I think this maybe is a one hour. No, that's right. Now, 145, though, is basically in the wick of this. A lot of times I like to do the body, but this is such a long wick that you're probably going to have to measure all the way up the top of the wick. So anywhere between 146.63 to 145, which is a 1.61 fib, might be a good entry on Apple. And then it can go higher, um, potentially past this supply zone and maybe all the way up here to 151. Okay, let's go over... The dollar. And you can comment below, do you like me using supply and demand with this with Elliott Wave? For me, it seems a lot more helpful. I'm a lot more structured in my trades. Because, I don't know, Elliott Wave by itself sometimes, especially in this market, it almost seems, it doesn't seem pointless, but it just like, there's no structure to it. And a lot of corrective moves make it a lot harder to trade. Because you're guessing... Is it going to go A, B, C, and then pull back A, B, C, and then how many A, B, Cs are we going to get, you know? So corrective moves are a lot harder to chart with Elliott Wave and predict exactly where it's going. We need some impulsive moves. We're not getting those impulsive moves in this market going on how many months now? Like this whole move, basically since October, we haven't had a very good impulsive move like we had from here in basically like four or five months i mean on smaller time frames but the whole thing has been corrective and so you know i think the demand zones are going to help out a lot the dollar so 105.38 so it hit this supply zone right here you can see this supply zone held that and then came off so if you're trading that short you could have made pretty good money 105.38 all the way down to 104.39 but that's not what we're looking for we're looking to see how far it's going to go up and again using Elliott wave I would say it's still got a little bit more to go but again, we have that supply zone right there as well. I need to get rid of these. And so we'll see. Can it break above this supply zone? If it's able to do that, the 1.61 fib is actually sitting in a, a decent supply zone. It's not, not my favorite kind, but like there's a lot of supply. Uh, resistance right here too around the top of 106 so I think that the dollar might have one more move higher and then it should start backing off for a B wave so that might give SPY enough juice to come down here and hit 395 maybe low 394 something like that so that's pretty much it um I highly suggest trying to get supply and demand into your charts. If you're using that, it should help out a lot. And use that with Elliott Wave. Then you know the direction of where it's going to go. And then you know where you're supposed to sell. You can use Elliott Wave and supply and demand. You can use moving average as well. Fib retracement tool. Um, put them all together and you can figure out a lot. There's probably more that I don't even use. I know a lot of people use like volume profile and that kind of stuff. I don't do that as much, but 
supply and demand will help out a lot. So that's pretty much it for this video. Actually, let's go over QQQ. Got to go over that real quick. So QQQ. So this has not came down like SPY did. SPY came down and hit the one hour demand. And you can see the 1.61 FIB is right in that area. So I won't be surprised if this comes down and hits about 291. And then I think it's ready to go higher. Uh, this is a very corrective move. So we know it's most likely going to be again A, B, C, and then it's going to go higher. The only other possibility after that would be and then a five wave move down. But again, that would turn into an expanded flat. So I think overall, just based on this being corrective, look for the one hour demand zone and then a move higher. So again, I'm using demand zones too with trading shares. Um, I don't recommend buying options in this market right now. I think it's going to be highly um, tough to trade in a corrective environment. And saying that right now, the market is selling off, so I got to cut this short. Oh, it's three o'clock. <laughs> but uh, market is falling here at the very end of the day. It looks like tomorrow might be the end of that C wave. So that was a good way to end it. 396.19 close, and we'll see what happens tomorrow. Are we going to get down to 394 and 395? Let me know in the comments. Like, subscribe for more updates, and let's see what happens tomorrow.